first tonight, colleagues and viewers have been remembering weather presenter Diane Oxbury, who has died after a short illness. She was 51. Diane worked at Northwest Tonight for 24 years and last appeared on screen just a few weeks ago. Her husband, Ian Hindle, called her an amazing wife and mother and an inspiration. Rob Smith has been speaking to those who knew her. In my house, I say, when I win the lottery, which causes a bit of a... <laughs> yeah. When we win the lottery, no, when I, when I win the lottery, <laughs> if I win the lottery. Diane Oxberry could brighten even the greyest forecast. For decades, she was part of viewers and listeners' daily lives, a gifted broadcaster who could connect with anyone. Have you ever fancied a garden room? Have you got £12,000? Well, you're not getting one then. Uh, this is more in my budget. Any four plants, £10. That's value. She was a sincere and lovely in real life as she came across on the telly because that's just how she was and she didn't take herself too seriously. She knew it was just a job, but she did it brilliantly. I think we can't quite get our heads around it. it I mean, she was here just before Christmas. I mean, we did, we did Children in Need walk together. We walked 20 miles together um, just eight weeks ago and I couldn't keep up with Di. So for her to be gone, it, it, it's unimaginable. Hello and welcome to Inside Out Northwest. The presenter was known far beyond this corner of the world. Diane started her broadcasting career on Radio 1 in the 1980s, rubbing shoulders with superstars. Still a kid, still a kid at heart. Well, I've got Gary and Rob with me. Do you want to do... In 1991, she moved into Saturday morning television on the 815 from Manchester, an indelible happy memory of many a childhood. Here for the first time is Diane Oxbury. Yes, I'm going to be here tonight and every night. This Three years later, after studying meteorology, Diane joined Northwest Tonight as its weather presenter. She was an outstanding broadcaster because it was her manner. She was so comfortable and easy. People thought, oh, well, it's easy for her. She'd just come in and do it. But that's a real talent. Well, it's a gift to be able to communicate down the lens to people as though they feel you're talking to them and bringing you into their story. <laughs> Books of condolence opened for viewers and colleagues at BBC Studios across the Northwest. Flowers left in Media City thanked Diane for the sunshine. Her husband, Ian Hindle, paid the most moving of tributes, describing her as an amazing wife and mother who embraced life to the full, an inspiration to all who knew and loved her. She will forever live on in our hearts. If you don't like those charts, this might be the one that you like. <laughs> Diane's talent and warmth will never be forgotten. God love Diana. <laughs> God love her. Ooh, you've made it sunshine I have made for everybody. It for once. Eamon and Neil Jones is in the studio now. Eamon, you saw Diane just a few days ago. This must be just an incredible shock to everybody family, friends, colleagues. Well, it is, as you heard there, Tony. And she was working full on until very recently, and, and it's, it's been a very short illness, and that's one of the reasons why everybody is so shocked today. But I think Peter Kay, although you know it's his trademark to spoil everyone else's programme, <laughs> uh, he, he did sum it up there actually with his last phrase you know, you've made it sunshine. And it is, I suppose, it's slightly ironic for us to say, but it's true that wherever Diane went, sunshine went with her. And the, and the outpouring of love and, and grief from people who had never met her today shows just what uh, the high esteem that she was held in. Uh, your colleague, the BBC's producer, Sally Williams, was um, great in her tribute, saying that she'd just crack on with the job. She used to carry the uh, equipment. She was no airs and graces, and that's what I thought of her. Um, she was exactly as you saw on the telly, wasn't she? Absolutely. What you saw and what you heard is what you got. And, and carrying the tripods and getting teas and coffees for her doesn't sound much, does it? Well, there are quite a few presenters who don't do it. <laughs> there um, are. And in life, she was a strong, statuesque, beautiful woman and a, a, an amazing mum and a loving wife. And professionally, as you two will know, this industry, uh, she was the ultra professional, but wasn't interested in the trappings, the yeah. fame, the name. She was someone who wanted to connect with the audience, and, and we've seen evidence of that today, that you know, people who had, like yourselves, actually, you know, people will be now at home having their tea on the knee watching you, and that's how they felt with Diane. And as Gordon Byrne said there, getting through the camera lens into somebody's front room is a real skill and a gift. Yeah.
And also, I mean, she was she was hugely popular, if you think about it, uh, with the 815 from Manchester and, and being on Radio 1. I remember her from, from Radio 1 days. And, to, and when I'd walk into the office when I worked at the BBC many years ago and see her and think, that's Diane Oxbury. She's <laughs> super famous. Do you know what I mean? And, and she that. was like that. And when she came up to Manchester in 91, I think it was, to audition for the 815 from Manchester, because I happened to be passing by, I was roped in to be part of the audition process, to, you know, to be a pretend guest. And I thought exactly the same. Um, but then we just saw her there with a, a picture of Diane there with Paul McCartney. You had to kind of drag these stories out of her because I, I, must, get, I must say this about her. She was humble. Yeah. She had a deep humility. And... Uh, All right. Eamon, thank Eamon, you so much for coming in to talk to us. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Exclusive ITV figures have...